Damn, I just accidentally stumbled into a transpersonal channeling healing session for the whole of the collective consciousness of humanity on LSD. <gasps> and it ended up looking like this. Mm. Oh, shit. I don't know what was happening in those last hours. But let me back up a little bit. Hey, I'm Vago and this is Psychedelic Actualization. On this channel we talk about topics like self-realization, self-actualization and working with psychedelics to live a more authentic and fulfilling life. So if you're interested in any of these topics, subscribe to the channel right now. So, let me back up for the story of this experience. I had the intention to have a very light experience. A very light experience to review the year, to see what I want to do next year and just check in with myself a little bit. And I got this really um, good acid from my friend and he told me like, you gotta try this acid. And it was just one drop on a paper, one drop into a little water bottle. And he said, it's really good acid. Like, let me know what, what you think of it. So I didn't know like how concentrated it was or what the dose was. And I thought it was just one drop of this little paper and I just took it, not expecting to have a very intense experience. And so I drank the, the water bottle with the acid um, as well. And I was laying down, I was preparing uh, a playlist, a John Hopkins psilocybin therapy playlist, I was putting on the eye shades and was just laying down to settle into the experience and meditate a little bit and yeah like after a few minutes i realized that this is getting really intense so i put down the eye shades so looking around and everything was kind of twisting and turning I'm like this is really intense visuals and i was sitting here i was looking outside of my window and I saw that the houses outside, they started to melt. I was like, this is gonna be a little bit more intense than I anticipated. So probably not gonna be in the outside too much, but just gonna settle in a little bit more, put the eye shades back on and listen to the <laughs> playlist a little bit more because when I was looking outside those houses they were kind of melting and transforming into ancient Ganeshas that were shape-shifting uh, and it had a really intense vibe <laughs> so I was laying back down putting the eye shades back on and just opening up to the experience and it was intense yeah this was a proper LSD ceremony, it felt like. And it came completely unexpected for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I've ever gone that deep with LSD. I think it was my first experience in the transpersonal domain. And a very specific transpersonal domain. I mean, I've had experiences that were kind of transpersonal before, but this was really intense. Um, let's start with the physical sensations. At one point it got to a point where I had really intense physical sensations. So I had really intense energetic releases and I was kind of shaking the whole time. Mm. At the same time I was going through like weird, weird scenarios of consciousness and at one point I was kind of worried because uh, I had this experience alone and it got to a point where it got so intense physically I was like, is this going to be physically dangerous? Should I have somebody here to look over me? So that kind of worry started to arise in me like having a trip sitter, not having a trip sitter. I'd say if you engage in those intense experiences, definitely always have somebody there or at least on call that you can check in with. 
But I didn't have anybody, so I was just on my own, <laughs> kind of letting go into the experience. And it was very interesting, because this personal domain, it reminded me of the book and what I read in LSD and the Mind of the Universe. Really good book, you should buy it. Now I understand what Mr. Bache was talking about. Like, those sessions can get really intense. And Mr. Beige um, talks about different concepts. For example, he argues that in highly energized psychedelic states, the collective unconscious is sometimes activated to such a degree or in such a manner that it triggers a collective healing process. And that's a very interesting point, because that is exactly how it felt like for me. It was beyond all my personal concerns. It was not a, not a trauma release, not something on the personal level of my mind, kind of. This was like the first time I, I experienced something like that, that Consciousness itself used me as a vessel to kind of channel through some healing. And that's what I was doing, like all kinds of weird stuff and shaking with my body, going through energetic releases that felt so far from personal. They felt so collective in a sense. It was mind-blowing, right? And what is interesting is, I was thinking about it today, is like, I do have the knowledge and the perspective of Mr. Beige and of Stanislav Grof and of their maps of this territory. And honestly, without those maps, I don't know where I would have landed or how I would have handled the experience. Because they helped me to have a context for the experience and a knowing that this potential is there and that this is a kind of a normal and common experience in very intense high-dose psychedelic sessions. So that was good. That was a good thing that I had those frames of mind to hold on to, kind of because they kind of gave me the safety to surrender into the experience. But also I was thinking, like, did my reading of those books from Groff and Beige and taking in those frames of mind, did it influence the potentiality of a experience like that? That something like that would unfold? Because I never had this experience before and I've had many, many, many LSD experiences. Uh, which is kind of interesting. But now that I was reading about it just recently, I also had some LSD experiences after that that were not like that. But now I felt like I kind of tapped into that domain that those people were talking about. Without the context of this book, I don't know, like, where this session, for example, would have led me. How, how would, I've, would have I interpreted those um, experiences, or this experience, for example, without having the context of those maps from those people? So that is a kind of an interesting thought, because I have these frames of mind now, which I can... Uh, organize the experience in and interpret the experience through but is it like is it good to have those or would have been differently if I didn't have those it definitely would have been more challenging and confusing at least from my standpoint and also an interesting thought came to my mind is like how would the experience have unfolded without music because I was listening to this psilocybin study playlist and it was deep evocative shamanic music and it definitely had a big impact upon the session and the flow of the experience kind of which is interesting like how how would have 
that experience unfolded in silence. Many questions, like questions upon questions, and uh, back to the physical sensations, it definitely felt like an extreme sport, this experience. And also now I understand a friend, what Jack said. <laughs> Jack said like, you gotta train your body like to, to take on these sessions. You gotta be like, it's an extreme sport to take on high dose psychedelic sessions. Cause you use your body to kind of channel something. It's crazy. Cause all those all those sensations in the body are so demanding <laughs> and Mr. Beige again he talks about like like an athlete undertaking a demanding uh, sport we have to train for the event not only do our minds have to adjust to the expanded capacities LSD awakens but so do our bodies and at the beginning of the experience it was funny I was thinking and being inspired, like, hey, yeah, I should work out more, I should go to the gym. And at the end of the experience, like after those heavy energetic releases and those shakings of the body, I had aches, like body pains and aches all over my body. I just couldn't really properly move anymore. I was like, not like I want to go to the gym, but if I want to continue on these explorations, I need to go to the gym <laughs> and train my body and like prepare my body for those extreme energetic releases that can happen in those high dose psychedelic sessions. So very interesting insight. Definitely oh, still hurts like the whole body. <laughs> and um, also interesting, like Groff's understanding of these convulsions is that they are the body's way of throwing off large quantities of physiological stress. The body is purifying itself so rapidly that it is literally convulsed by the discharge. And I felt like that was kind of what was happening to me and it was very interesting because it just happened like i had no control over it i just had to surrender to the experience and now we will come to the surrendering part to the stuff that was happening internally in my mind because those were just like the physical sensations Internally, I was just observing a spectacle of consciousness. It was a whole show of all kinds of different images that I really struggled to put into words because it was so weird. It was so, so, yeah, right? <laughs> so hard to describe because it's a big show like happened before my eyes. And what was interesting is there was kind of a paradox of view. So uh, what I was noticing is at some points in the experience, I was observing the spectacle of consciousness. this like infinite show of whatever it was from a point of view, from my point of view. And then it was kind of switching into becoming that spectacle into becoming the thing that I was observing. So I was observing like infinite creatures of humans in all kinds of different centuries and ages. And I was observing them and then I, I was switching into becoming them. And when I was becoming them, I noticed that I felt kind of dissociated from my sense of self. So I was kind of, it was a kind of, I don't know if it's the right word, but a kind of depersonalizing experience because I lost my sense of self by surrendering into becoming this different form of consciousness that is not coupled to my sense of self anymore. Um, difficult to describe, but an interesting observation. 
and uh, also again Mr. Beige also talks about it. I will, I will throw in a lot of quotes from this book because I just love it. <laughs> um, he says, in these states we are using consciousness to explore consciousness and a fascinating dance takes place between the mind doing the exploring and the larger mind being explored. And it also felt like I was kind of in an arena, like a gladiator, because it's difficult to describe, but I felt like I was fighting against or taking on those um, th those channelings of healing that were throw like flowing through me as a ve veil and I was like in my mind I was like okay like I'm ready for the next one like whatever it is give it to me <laughs> like come on I'm I'm ready like take me use me to to kind of process and finish this shamanic ceremony of the collective healing and it's like it came in waves and I had like a little break I was like this was intense I like after the convulsions and the seizures of like shaking and then I was like okay one more time and it the next wave came I was going into the state again kind of working through whatever needed to be worked through um, also very interesting it felt like it was a fight because it felt like a fight uh, between good and evil forces like I'm reading the Bhagavad Gita at the moment and those frameworks of the battlefield of the mind and those good and evil forces between selfishness and selflessness um, helped me to kind of navigate that space in that arena of hyperdimensional <laughs> fights <laughs> and um, Mr. Bachet also, Beige, uh, also talks about it. He says, from another perspective, I was engaged in shamanic combat with the demons of fear. But what a strange combat this was. Here, one conquers by surrendering, by making oneself vulnerable to what surrounds you. And that is what I felt like what was happening to me. Because I was taking on those challenges taking on those channelings of healing the collective <laughs> kind of which was absolutely weird like from my perspective you know but I was taking them on and then a fear would arise of like is this okay is this is this uh, something I should worry about and then I had to let go of that fear and just embrace what was what was coming up and what was being worked through and that was the whole experience the whole experience of like the channeling session was very short like just like three hours maybe but very intense three hours it's incredible what shit those channeling moments they got really rough they got like really <laughs> it's nice very nice. <sighs> and then for the next 14 hours or something, I was just feeling the after effects. I was coming down uh, at the end of those channelings. I was like, is it, is it finished? Like, is it, am I ready to, to like wake up now and stand up and can I move or is, is the next wave coming? I was like kind of afraid and I was just sitting here in my room just it's with a little bit of music chill music just reflecting drinking a tea just reflecting upon what happened because uh, such an experience never happened to me even though i have gone through very intense <laughs> psychedelic experiences for example one you can watch right here we had a really intense lsd session um, but never in that caliber of of in the transpersonal domain kind of and yeah like after that I honestly I have to say like I had to 
I, I, I was sitting with it and reflecting upon it, but after that I just wanted to kind of distract myself. I, I had, it definitely, it humbled me. It made me afraid of going deeper. It made me realize of how much I'm at the very beginning. Yeah, like, yeah, it just made me reflect again, like how much I'm at the very beginning of my exploration of these infinite realms of consciousness. Humbled me again. Deeply respectful. Thank you very much. Om Namah Shivaya. Oftentimes, after very intense psychedelic sessions, I that completely shatter my sense of self and my sense of what I think I know about reality. I just want to, like, hug my love, loved ones, have like a physical closeness, cuddle with somebody and uh, just feel safe and protected you know because it makes you so vulnerable those shatterings of your perceptions and of your sense of self but there was nobody there so i had to just like distract myself or i i just distracted myself being alone um watching some stuff reading some stuff uh making food eating so that was uh, the end of the session and one thing after the channeling session was the holy grail the mango that was waiting for me after that experience ah the holy mango the holy grail at the end of a Hard work session. Let's enjoy this moment together. Mm. I love mango. And oh my gosh, you don't want to see how I ate that mango. It was, I was like an animal. I think I never made love with a mango so much. I was just like stuffing it into my face it's just like eating it like an animal and enjoying it to the fullest I just made infinite love with that mango and we became one <laughs> it was so great and yeah how to integrate such an experience what I reflected upon is first thing because it was such a transpersonal experience first thing is just get on with your life like here on earth, I am motivated to get on with my life here on earth. Like I don't want to be lost in this hyperspace uh, of transpersonal healing or thinking that it is something special. It's still like being humble, being grounded here on this earth and appreciating this life and this ordinary sense of perception uh, is very important I think for the integration of those deeply transpersonal experiences. Another thing is I notice I have more drive to kind of embrace the discomfort a little bit more in my life, to take a cold shower, to walk barefoot outside in the winter, just to embrace that discomfort because this kind of discomfort is easy in comparison to to those intense psychedelic sessions um, so that's what I'm kind of inspired and motivated to do right now and a, a really interesting point I was uh, thinking about while a friend of mine was giving a reflection to me he's not that deeply into psychedelics but he was so kind to reflect upon my reporting back of this experience and he said that this is a path to um, that I went too far kind of or that it's very close to going too far and it's a very interesting thought to contemplate of like when do you know that you go too far with those experiences because 
I feel like the deeper I journey and the more I journey, the deeper it opens me up, the more I gain the momentum of opening up those uh, realms and, and journeying deeper into them. And for example, now after years of psychedelic use, it was the first time I was having kind of a seizure-like experience of like convulsions in my body and energetic releases. Well, I had one or two other experiences like that, but uh, but like in such an extreme sense, it was the first time on LSD um, like that. And it's interesting, like when do you go too far? How do you know when to indulge into such an experience again? I feel like now, after such an extensive experience, I need to back off a little bit. I need to take a step back, go to the gym, <laughs> train my body for the next one. But I want to take it on because it felt, it felt good. It felt nice. It felt terrifying in a sense, but it also felt like I was, as I said, um, going through a kind of healing process for the collective, which is a very interesting domain. Because I've worked through a lot of personal stuff in the last couple of years on a lot of psychedelic journeys. And the deeper I go and the more I have kind of worked through that personal stuff. Of course, here and there, there's still a lot of personal stuff coming up. But now I start to get into this transpersonal domain that Mr. Beige is talking about. And I will end it here and I will leave you with a quote again from Mr. Beige. Um, and he says, when an organism... It could be our consciousness, it could be our sense of self, or as I interpret it, it could also be the whole of reality, because the cosmic consciousness, the universe, or God, uh, or, or like uh, the collective unconscious of humanity maybe. He says, when an organism is called on from within to become more conscious, it must first cleanse itself of the psychological byproduct of living at its lower level of awareness. It must bring forward the residue of its past and purge that residue from its system in order to lay the foundation for a more refined level of operation. And like, please let me know, what do you think? Could we, as the psychedelic explorers, could these tools, these substances be used to open ourselves up to be vessels for this purging, for this purification of the whole collective of humanity. It's a very interesting thought that I've never thought about before because a lot of my journeys have been more in the personal domain of working through personal stuff. But now tapping into the transpersonal domain of that experience and reading Mr. Beige and Stanislav Grof and all the other works of those uh, great explorers of consciousness, I'm thinking like, is it a possibility? Those are very interesting theories um, that we can explore and think about and contemplate about. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you want to follow along on my journey of self-actualization, of self-realization and of working with psychedelics to live a more authentic and fulfilling life, subscribe to the channel right now. You can also follow me on Instagram, psychedelic actualization. You can donate via PayPal. Link is in the video description. And I love you all. Thank you all for watching this video until the very end and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.